Hi viewers, welcome to my channel and in this video we are going to watch how to grow a tomato plant from seed to harvest and grow it in a beautiful way. A growing a tomato plant can be as simple as just throwing some seed and waiting for it to yield or you can follow some steps meticulously and bring out a very great harvest. So we are going to definitely follow the second way on how to do it properly. So this video is going to be divided into multiple parts starting from how to choose the seeds, what type of seed and what type of plant we are choosing and how to sow the seeds. Once they germinate, transplanting happens, we will also cover a transplanting and then when you, after, after transplanting, what are all the activities that we need to do continuously, day by day, week by week to ensure the crop is <coughs> growing in an optimal condition. This will include the pH adjustment, the EC adjustment, what management to do regarding the crop, how we should train the crop vertically up, depending on the variety you choose, a lot of things. But then when you do all this, the reward is long trusses of beautiful red tomatoes for harvest. So let's get right into the video of the journey of a tomato plant from seed to harvest. Follow me along. Bye. Seeds are the first thing that you need to start a garden, be it any, any plant, doesn't matter. And tomato is no different. Um, so we start with a good se selection of seeds. I chose a cherry tomato variety called Sheremi from our gardenguru.in website. Um, and it is an indeterminate variety of tomato. In one of my previous video, I had explained what is a determinate and what is an indeterminate and how to identify by just looking at a plant. Indeterminate variety of tomato is actually a, a very a long season tomato. You cannot determine when it will end. Indeterminate. And it will continue to yield little little for a long time. And then there is another variety of tomato called determinate variety. Which will give you a lot of yield in a shorter span of time. For, I am doing this on my rooftop uh, as a trial. And I want something that can give me continuously than all at once so this was the best suited type for me but you decide which one works the best for you i always prefer indeterminate over determinate but your mileage may vary so i chose the indeterminate variety of tomato and the seeds that i took are treated seeds why treated seeds because they also are very resilient to fungal and uh, pre-emergence infections pre-emergence but before it germinates if there is any problem that happened that could be a fungal insect treated seeds avoid all that but if you are an organic grower and you want to stick to an untreated seeds absolutely fine you can go ahead with it the untreated seeds you need to be a little more careful in selecting the right infection free medium so once you select the seeds now it is our turn to select the seed starting mix the easiest mix you can find is either a peat moss based mixture or a cocoa peat based mixture. Those who are watching it from India, you can use a cocoa peat based mixture which is easily available here in India. But if you are watching this from outside of India, getting a peat moss based mixture is easier. So whatever is your mixture is, it should be inert. If you are growing it in hydroponics, it should be definitely inert. But if you are growing it in a conventional way or an organic way, you can add a bit of compost to the mixture and it's not going to hurt. But remember seedlings, seeds to germinate, they don't need any fertilizer. So the mix I use is just cocoa peat, the regular cocoa peat that you get. Ensure that the, the salt content of the cocoa peat is lesser. It is always specified as a conductivity value. So it should be 0.5 or lesser, the EC value of the cocoa peat. But what if you don't have cocoa peat, you can still do it in whatever mix you get, just ensure they are infection free. But if you are doing hydroponics, I, uh, I recommend using an inert medium. <clears throat> you can do perlite, vermiculite, whatever is that you have in your availability. So now once you have a mix ready, we always squeeze the mixture to get the extra water out. If it is not wet, just moisten it only a little bit so that there is no heavy water stagnation in the mix. The seed starting medium should not be soggy wet. It should be just barely moist. 
once the moisture is right seeds pop out like anything so what we do we take propagation trays because we needed about close to 20 different plants we used a propagation tray but if you need only one or two plants you can do direct sowing also i needed more so i used a propagation tray propagation tray is a, a large tray where there are a lot of cavities for you to fill up the cocoa pit and put seeds in it if you have a propagation tray you can use the propagation tray fill it up with seed starting mix and put seeds in it some of you may even have access to what is called a jiffy plug so that makes it very easy for beginners to uh, sow and transplant because in a propagation tray you need to uh, take the seeds out with a little bit of a, a knack so use a jiffy plug or a propagation tray whichever is available for you and whichever is something that is easier now once you sow the seeds what we do is we cover it with a, a poly polyfilm or a sheet or a tray to ensure the moisture is locked in though this is not absolutely rec essential this i have always seen um, increases the percentage of germination and the number of days it takes is shortened we grow close to a lakh seedlings every month for our commercial farms and for every single seed we follow this technique so i recommend that you follow this and also let us know how your results have been so now that we have sown the seeds you need to cover it with a polythene sheet and after 2 to 3 days just keep checking if there is any signs of germination as soon as they germinate it is for you to remove the sheet and expose them to good sunlight when i say good good sunlight at this point any delay in exposing them to sunlight can cause seedlings to look for light and become very lanky you don't want that and when the seedlings are lanky it is not going to be a, making a good crop so try your best to stay on top of this make sure you watch the seedling tray now and then or at least on a daily basis and ensure they don't grow lanky once the seedlings are up and they're exposing them to good sunlight it is time for you to water them with nutrition not plain water and when i say nutrition i mean hydroponic nutrients from seedling to transplanting stage you are going to be watering these plants with a half strength nutrient solution the the nutrition in the seed is only to get the seedling to germinate after that it's fully your responsibility to water them every day you should water the seedlings and in the morning when the nutrient solution after about 20 to 25 days the seedling will be ready for transplanting in my crop i chose a 12 inch diameter pot which is also 12 inch tall for transplanting i filled it up with coconut coir peat which is cocoa peat shortly um, about about an inch or two from the top and that should be more than enough which really holds about 10 to 12 liters of cocoa peat media and basically you need to fill all the pots that you have with the right amount of mix and one thing you need to ensure is there is drainage hole in all the pots drainage is as essential as watering is so don't uh, try to reduce the drainage just to save you from watering frequently uh, it is very important that you have sufficient drainage holes once the transplanting is done you need to water the plant every day with nutrients now when i say nutrients i mean grow nutrients because the plant is in a early stage now the plant has to be growing and growing in size with the canopy leaves and stem stems so we use a grow nutrient till the point where the plants are starting to flower when the plants are starting to flower we switch to what is called a bloom nutrient grow and bloom nutrients have different goals one is to increase the plant in size 
and the other is to increase the fruit set increase the plant to flower more so remember the the nutrient change is just a request to the plant it by no means changes the plants direction to from growing to flowering so during this stage from transplanting till flowering we continue to use the same nutrient that we used for seed germination but we used half strength before now we use a full strength which will be about ec2 to 2.5 this range is given so that plants usually work on a range and not a single number so at this point we water the plant every day uh, in some places the frequency of watering can be increased to 2 or 3 um, for a home garden single watering is more than sufficient but if you want a very optimal results the watering is done as per the sunlight radiation on the plant which is usually highest during the noon so early in the morning is a little let lesser and evening is a little lesser so there is more frequency of watering in the midday and lesser in the morning but my goal is to not complicate things and the idea is to make it easy for you to raise a good plant so we did it just one watering a day so <clears throat> if you want results like this you can follow one watering a day also got the seedlings raised we transplanted them we increased the nutrients to one did i say indeterminate tomato at some point yes indeterminate tomatoes need you to do one more thing to them you need to train them so these are plants that will grow very tall when i say very underline that word very very tall 40 feet 50 feet is not uncommon so the height of my greenhouse is 9 feet so how are you going to accommodate a 40 feet plant not just one we are talking about 15 20 plants so that's when training them vertically helps and with tomato we do a little di- uh, differently so first we have uh, to train the tomato to grow vertically and that what we do we tie the plants with clips and tie them up on a rope which is a overhead Why I also have recorded a video on how to trellis the tomato. I think that may be uh, good. It, it is wiser for you to see that also at this point. I'll anyway leave a link um, on the video. So when you train it, you train the plant up by tying the uh, clips and the rope along with the stems. We also call low. We also do something called lowering the plant. So every time it the top of the plant touches the tallest point of your uh greenhouse or the overhead wire you cannot uh train it any more higher so you need to lower it and bend the plant so the plant instead of growing like this it will grow like this and then when this plant goes up this is lower it and then so the plant grows like this for a while and then goes up when it goes a taller than this and then again you lower it so it's leaning and lowering leaning and lowering so there is a this is the technique that we follow by doing this we can allow a plant to grow much much more uh, taller than what your actual physical height of the greenhouse is so while you are already doing this the plant should have started to yield a lot of tomatoes but the most difficult part in this is waiting for them to ripen it takes almost a month for them to come to a ripened stage uh, in cherry tomato we also have to wait for the entire truss to ripen it's not fun if you have just one red and all of them green and market pays you more if you have all of them red at the same time we all love some uniformity don't we so so waiting for the ripening is also essential here but one thing to note down is the flavor the sweetness the acidity of the fruit depends on how you harvest them and when you harvest them most of the commercial tomatoes that you get in the grocery store are harvested when they are barely ripe so it is only the coloration that you are buying it for you buy it because it's red color not essentially it's a fruit so all that is red or not fruit 
when you grow on the plant and ripen it on the plant it is a fruit in its flavor and its color so wine ripened fruits are the best leave your fruits to ripen on the plant and you will thank me later so i think we have reached a point where we have seen from seed selection to sowing to transplanting to uh, training the plant and what's left harvesting uh, some more things are left what we also do is called pruning in the entire process there will be lot of activities that will be happening and one thing that will keep on happening in a repeated way is branching in this plant the taller the plant gets it will put out lot of branches on the sides tomato is actually usually trained as a single stem so whatever branches that keep coming on the sides it's your task to remove them remove them sooner so every single day or once in two days you have to head to your farm or your garden to see where are all the branches coming up and then you need to prune them out you can use a pruner or simply snap it off for branches that are smaller the word that technical word that is used for branches are called suckers you have to remove these suckers so remove these uh, branches as soon as they come out longer you leave it it's going to simply take all the nutrients away and then you are going to toss toss them off anyway so keep a watch on your plant and remove all the side shoots and also continue to train them while you do all that you might keep getting harvests do harvest them and enjoy your tomatoes um so at some point after the flowering is started you should be switching to bloom nutrients bloom nutrients has more nutrition for potassium and it will improve the fruit colors texture and the sugar content in it so if you do all this you will get a good harvest of tomatoes so i hope i covered the entire um, uh, start to end of growing tomatoes but if you have some questions or if you felt i have left out some topics please uh, uh, reach out to us or mention in the comments i'll be happy to add that in my next video so thanks for watching enjoy bye bye